Hello, this is Jay Goldstein of the Local and State History Department at the Cumberland County Public Library. As a part of this multi-part series, we will be meeting with Paul Peoples of the United States Marine Corps Historical Company to discuss Lieutenant General John Archer Lejeune and the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Good day, Paul Peoples from the United States Marine Corps Historical Company inside of the Visitor Center of the North Carolina Veterans Park. It has signs here, it talks about North Carolina's military history and one of the images that's here is relevant to General Lejeune. There's a copy of a recruiting poster from the World War I era right here. It shows a couple of Marines in khakis. They're raising a flag over some tropical scene. The background to this, in 1914, Mexico is in a state of revolution and civil war. In 1910, they're democratic. The dictator had been overthrown and they had democratic elections. This was followed by a military coup taking place in Mexico and the United States not recognizing General Huerta who took control in Mexico. The situation uh, rises up with the port of Veracruz where a German flag ship full of munitions is going to be coming in as aid to the Huerta regime. President Woodrow Wilson makes the determination that he doesn't want this to happen and sailors and marines end up landing in the port of Veracruz. It becomes a three-day battle initially to capture just the port facilities but they end up taking the whole Port. General Lejeune will participate in this. He will lead a Marine Brigade that's in there. So this picture right here was from a photograph after the United States forces secure the port of Veracruz and that's Lejeune's regiment that's in the foreground right here. So this was a very iconic picture of that era where the Marines have the slogan, first to fight. They had been the first ones into Cuba in 1898. They were in Mexico in 1914. Um, also, 5,000 soldiers will end up occupying the port along with Lejeune and his 2,000 man strong regiment from April to November of 1914. Now, during this time, larger world events are going to unfold. The crisis in Europe with the assassination of the Austrian Grand Duke, which escalates into what uh, was then known as the World War. The United States is initially neutral. Now, what's going to happen with the United States, and specifically the United States Marine Corps during this period there is going to be other situations coming up uh, Haiti in 1915 Marines are going to land in Haiti they're going to end up staying there until 1934 also it's a watershed for Marine Corps history and the Marine Corps recruit depot at Paris Island South Carolina is established Prior to this time, Marine Corps recruits, essentially, they're given on-the-job training at the various shore facilities. So it's not, not standardized, so at this point, all the Marine recruits, they will go to, to Paris Island, all get standardized training. Lejeune will come back from Mexico. He will be given the position of assistant to the Commandant of the Marine Corps and then he will be promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. 
1916, some other significant things happen. The Marine Corps is given an expansion, expands to about 14,000. Also, the reserve component of the Marine Corps is formed. 1916 will also see the beginning of another long-term commitment in the Dominican Republic, then known as Santo Domingo. Marines will go in there in 1916. They will be there until 1924. The 5th Marine Division will be one of the first American units sent over to France in 1917. It will be followed later that year by the 6th Marine Regiment and other units. They will be formed into the 4th Marine Brigade and become a component of the United States Army's 2nd Infantry Division of the American Expeditionary Force in France. It will see action at Belle Wood, Vaux, and Soissons during June and July of 1918. Lejeune will deploy to France in June of 1918. He assumes command of the 4th Brigade on 15 July 1918. Then at the end of the month, he will be given command of the U.S. Army's 2nd Infantry Division and be promoted to Major General. He is the first Marine officer to command a U.S. Army unit of that size. Lejeune will command the 2nd Division through the campaigns at saint Michel, Blancmont, and Merce Argonne. This unit will go on to occupation duty in the Rhineland after the armistice was signed on 11 November 1918. He would lead it home in the late summer of 1919. The USMC would expand to 74,000 by the time of the armistice. 32,000 would go to France, where 2,459 would be killed in action or missing in action, and 9,322 would be wounded in action. This amounts to almost a 33% casualty rate. Marines would also serve in the Azores, China, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Guam, Nicaragua, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. A further 2,100 Marines would be serving on sea duty. 305 women Marine Reservists would serve stateside to free Marines to fight in France. The USMC's aviation component would expand from a mere 35 Marines to 2,462 Marines. Marine aviation units would deploy to the Azores and to Belgium. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to tune in in the coming weeks for more episodes of this series. Have a wonderful day.